Morning guys, uh, really excited this morning, six o'clock in the morning. Uh, it's still in, in minus numbers, uh, but the important thing is no ice on the road and it's dry and there is a blue sky forming behind me, uh, which is perfect conditions for driving. So I'm going to, I'm not gonna to go to the car right now, I'm gonna get some bread rolls first for breakfast and then after that, when the kids have gone to school, I will put the battery back in the car, get the car running and take it for its first drive of 2018. So it's seven o'clock, 7.30 in the morning now and uh, kids are off to school and I'm gonna put the battery in the car and I'm gonna start it up for the first time, uh, check tire pressures, because as I said before, they're all pretty high and then start it up and go for a drive. So here we go. So yeah, these are, the, uh, these are the things that I put into the exhaust pipe which work pretty well because they're metal. Uh, they're just literally kitchen sponges, metal kitchen sponges, and they stop anything from going into the exhaust pipes and making their nest there. Okay, so just checking the tyre pressures, I put them all up to about three and a half bar to save any flat spots uh, over the winter. Um, but I've got my pressure gauge here and I'm gonna take them down to the correct settings which are for these tyre sizes. Uh, 225 at the front and mm, 285 at the back I think. It's 2.5 bar at the front and 3 bar at the back. So. Uh, this is the pressure gauge that I bought and it's quite a neat little thing. Uh, you can get them from Porsche actually, they're about 50 pounds from Porsche which is quite a nice touch. It's got a little reset button on the side there, goes to 4.5 bar and a little, a little connector there. I bought it at the end of last year, just basically for this very job, so, um, but I, I think it's, it's going to be a bit more accurate than the petrol station. Started really well, um, just on the button really, as you probably heard. No strangeness out of the exhausts, only condensation as you'd expect, so I'm really pleased with that. Uh, sounds fantastic. I heard a little bit of a a creak when I turned the steering wheel from the dashboard, so I don't know what that might be. Um, we'll see if that goes away. Uh, if not, we'll have to investigate, but I don't think it's anything serious. Um, so yeah. And yeah, so I'm going to leave it running, do the other air, uh, air pressures on the tyres that I couldn't get to, and take it for a drive. 
So there's a bit more condensation coming out there, but I guess that's normal. Um, it's been sitting yeah, it's dripping quite, quite a lot out of that exhaust tip there. Uh, but I'm not worried about that. Engine sounds perfect. No leaks underneath or anything. Well, not yet anyway. <laughs> but, yeah. All sounds and looks pretty good. Otherwise, these are the things that I did to safeguard the tyres. Uh, so you can see the indentations there, pretty big. But I think that would have really helped in the slats that I put between these uh, these peaks on this on this garage floor. Um, and under here, basically the same sort of thing. But over here, you can see how it's rested on the back there. So I think I've got to go move my car because somebody's coming. Um, but yeah, catch up again a bit. Yeah. I've driven about two miles just to uh, get it away from the garage and so I'm in a, a, a parking lot in the middle of a woods with the um, sun shining right behind me so I have to hold the camera on this side but anyway I had to stop earlier because uh, it, it must have been from another car but as I happened to look behind me when I was pulling away from a, uh, a junction there was a big stream of uh, uh, water on the road, which I thought, oh crikey, um, I hope that's not me. So I stopped and had a look and there was bone dry underneath, so I'm guessing it was somebody else's air conditioning uh, or something along those lines. But anyway, so I'm going to leave the car running for a little bit, go on my drive, and um, well yeah, I guess I guess now's a good time really to, to, to go around it in the sunlight. And then I'll um, I'll tr an attempt to make a video of, of driving. So I've got my son's GoPro with me, uh, which are uh, yeah I've got this head thing which it fits on my head. But other than looking completely idiotic driving around with something like that on your head, um, I think because I'm so tall it would just hit the roof, and you wouldn't be able to see out the the windscreen. So um, okay, let's have a look around the car. It's a, a UK car, and I'm living in Germany, so right-hand drive obviously, and I bought it in uh, Scotland after a, a, a long look. Uh, it was quite simple for me because I knew what I wanted to have. It had to be a C2 midnight blue uh, with the sunroof delete um, and ideally a generation 2. So I had looked at a, a couple of gen 1s uh, but really wanted the generation 2 for a whole bunch of reasons. Um, bigger engine, more power, more safety with all the airbags and so on. So uh, so mine's got sat-nav, which actually works really well. It's got cruise control and it's got, uh, sorry, there's cruise control and there's the computer, trip computer. But otherwise it's got extended leather, Metropole blue leather, manual obviously. And it's got a, a slight lower to it. The previous owner uh, did the IMS bearing, which was really good. And he did the MO30 suspension, which is amazing. So since then, and I'll show it in a different video, I've done a whole bunch of work to the car, replaced all of the bushes, uh, which was pretty costly but really worth it because there are cobblestones over here and I could really tell the drop link arms, uh, sorry, the lower control arms needed doing. So I did, I, I tell a lie, I didn't do quite all of them. I did, out of the 14, I did 10 actually. So, so the other, the, the two which were the control arms which attached to the wheel carrier at the top here, the two diagonal ones left and right you can't really see, I left those, but otherwise, all of the others I did, which, there's new anti-roll bar, new bushes, new control arms, new drop link arms, pretty much everything, so, so yeah, I've done quite a lot of work on it, let's get that to focus again, but otherwise, the paint works in pretty good condition, I've got to do a little bit of work here and there, um, but otherwise, it's, uh, it's a fantastic car, and I love it. Yeah, not much more to explain, I don't think, really. Well, there's probably tons of stuff, but I don't, I'm not going to do it now. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to try and get a, a video of me driving, just so you can see the roads around here and hopefully set up here the exhaust. It's got, a, it's got the uh, Porsche switchable exhaust, the PSE, which works. Uh, is, uh, well, I say it works, it's on all the time. At the moment, the, um, there's a, a servo on the left bank, uh, which has stopped working, so I'm quite happy that it's it's stuck in the on position, uh, but it sounds absolutely fantastic. I mean, really an amazing sound, and if you can, uh, it's, a, it's a great option to have. So annoyingly, my, um, 
my GoPro just ran out of batteries, which is bloody typical. So I'm doing this in an alternative and very safe way. So let's see. I don't know if you can hear that, that noise there. So I'm obviously not gonna push it because it, I mean, it is warm, but uh, I just don't want to. Hopefully you can get an idea of the sound of the car from inside the cabin. I can feel a bit of a wobble or vibration from the wheels and Given that I had them all balanced and tracking done to the nth degree before I put it away, I think it's probably the, the flat spots, which is a bit annoying really. I suppose it, I'm hoping it'll drive out, but uh, but after, after doing all I did, you'd have hoped that there wouldn't be any. Uh, maybe I didn't put enough pressure in the tires. I uh, put it up to about half a bar above what it should have been. Maybe it should have been higher. Most of the tires were pretty much at that same level when I just checked them and took the, the pressure down, but I guess I guess that amount of time, four months, just sitting on one spot is gonna have some kind of a, an effect, so I can feel it, uh, but I'm thinking maybe it's getting a bit better. Uh, the ride otherwise is perfect, I mean it's perfect. Having done all those bushes, it really makes a difference to the drive. It's a bit of a big cost, it's a very easy job if you want to do it yourself. Unless, of course, some of the bolts are stuck. I had a couple of eccentric bolts at the back uh, which were stuck and I had to have some help taking those out, but otherwise, really worth it.